going to be showing you something here about uniform circular motion. We're also eventually going to talk about centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about what centrifugal force is or why uh, physicists sometimes don't use it and some people do use it. But uh, let's, let's first start with uniform circular motion. Uniform means the same, so we're going to assume that you're just rotating at the same speed here. But before that, I want to start off by just doing a little bit of a sort of blast from the past here uh, and do this. So earlier, um, we learned that, now here we're talking about acceleration here. So we're going to say that the acceleration was due to a change in velocity over time. I suppose I should say delta t. So in other words, so this here, this is the key thing. So you change in velocity, oops, so change in velocity means you accelerate. So as long as you change your velocity, you would accelerate. Okay, no problem there. I mean, we've learned, we've learned things like, uh, like this, so I'll just say, you know, most people um, how should I say this? So most people only think of, or only think um, acceleration happens when you, uh, how should I say this here? Uh, when you change the magnitude so when you change the magnitude of the velocity. Now this is the thing that most people think of when they think of accelerating. So in other words, what we mean here is, you know, make v equals larger, you accelerate. Most people understand that. You know, like if you're in your car and you step on the gas, you're making your velocity go from one value to another value. So because of that, then you would accelerate. And that is correct. This is still okay. But what I want to show you is this, though. Um, so I'm going to say this maybe in green, I'll make it a different thing, but remember that, whoop, remember that velocity is a vector. That means there's two things you can change, right? Because a vector has magnitude and direction. So you see what we've done in the past, when you've actually been taking a look at, you know, changing the velocity by just making the value larger or smaller, you've just been changing the magnitude. So this is the question to you then is what if you change, or actually let's say this, what if you keep the magnitude the same In other words, whatever value this was, if this was like 500, uh, or I don't know, 5 meters per second, you keep it at 5 meters per second, but you change the direction all the time. But change only the direction. This is sort of the question to you. Well, the answer is, you still accelerate. That's the key thing here happening. So what happens then is this. This is actually the whole thing about circular motion. So this is the idea behind it. What we're doing in circular motion, um, the reason why we say that you have a centripetal acceleration, I'm going to teach you that in just a second here. I'm going to show you that. But the key is this. You can have acceleration whenever you change the velocity over time. And like I said before, most people think that acceleration only happens when you change the magnitude of the velocity. And it's true. I mean, this is correct. That, you know, if you make V larger or smaller or whatever, then you accelerate. Sure, absolutely. But because V is a vector, you can not only change the magnitude, but if you change the direction, you're also accelerating. And that's what's happening in a circle. So this is going to be a little bit weird to think about. And this is not... This is not obvious to most people. So let's say, so pretend, um, so consider, 
I roll a marble. Remember, a marble is just a little sphere. So it's just a, a small little spherical thing here. Um, I want it to go on a straight line. No problem. Then I just take my marble and I just, you know, give it some sort of push this way and it's going to go there. No problem. A-OK. -okay. All right. If I want it to go in a circle, oops, what could I do? So what I'm going to show you here is this. This is actually a kind of a neat situation here. So if I was in front of you, I would actually do this. But it turns out, just imagine I have a marble here. So what I'm going to show you now is this. I'm going to take this marble here, and I'm going to just, you know, give it a kick forward here. Now the problem is, though, all I'm allowed to do, let's just assume I'm only allowed to give it a small impulse. In other words, a small little push. I'm going to say I could give it small pushes. Now, how would I have to push it? Well, if I want it, let's say I want it to go in a circle to the left here. Let's say I want it to go around, around like this right here. In order to do that, as it's rolling this way, I could maybe, you know, give it a little bit of a push to the left. And that means then after I've pushed it, then it'll actually be going maybe like this. And then if I give it another push, this time I push it sort of inside again, and I can maybe make it go like this. And then I can maybe, you know, make it push a little bit more, and maybe I could sort of push it a little bit more. So I could sort of, you know, by giving it a little push on the inside, you know, if I push it, you know, to the left, then it's going to go like this, in a straight line again. And the reason why it always goes in a straight line, by the way, that's going to be because of Newton's uh, first law, that an object in motion wants to stay in uniform motion. So if I have it going in a straight line, I give it a little push. In other words, I give it an impulse, a little force. Then it's going to change its direction, obviously, but then it's going to keep going in a straight line. And then if I pushed it again, then it would go like this, and maybe I push it again and like this. Now this doesn't look like much of a circle. So what if I give it a bunch of really small little pushes? What I want you to do is try to think of the direction of the pushes. Okay, so it turns out this right here would be, you know, its velocity here, and this right here would be its velocity, and this is also its velocity, and this is its velocity, and this is the velocity. So assuming that I kept the same value of velocity, but I've had it change direction. Do you notice it's going here, then it's going upper left, then it's going lower left, then it's going sort of down and right, then it's going right. The key thing is this. I could give it small pushes, and I'll say directed, towards the center. This is the key thing here. So that means that the little pushes that I gave it, let's say up here, the first push I gave it had to be like this. This would have been my force here. I would have pushed it like this, and I would have made it go that way. Then I would have pushed it like this, and I would have gone this way. Then over here I would have given it a little push like this, or like this, or like this. So it turns out, if I give it little pushes always towards the center, I'm going to make it go in a circle. This is the key thing that I want you to understand. Okay, this is the key, key thing, is this. In uniform, uniform just means, you know, same speed here. So we're having it go the same, the, the magnitude of the vector here is the same. In other words, let's say it's 5 meters per second, it's always going to be 5 meters per second. So in uniform, circular motion, uh, we could say then that uh, only the direction of the velocity changes. And uh, because of that then, um, the force needed is pointing towards the center. And anything that's pointing towards the center, we're actually going to say that that means centripetal. Because centripetal, what that really means is center-seeking. That's really what this means here. It means 
You know, it's a force that's directed towards the center. So if you have a centripetal force, it means you have a force that's towards the center. And take a look at this. That's what's happening. So in general then, if I have anything that's going in a circle, so this is going to be now, if I have something actually going in a nice, nice circle, let's just assume I drew a perfect circle. I didn't, but so this right here could be my velocity at that time. Maybe this is the velocity at that time. Maybe that's the velocity there. That's the velocity there and so on. doesn't matter how you draw it. But if it's going around like this or here, this is the value of its velocity is always going to be the same. That's its velocity here. Just put a little vector on top. Well, if that's its velocity, then the force going inwards is, well, it's always that. It's always center seeking force. So because of that, then we're going to call it this. We're going to say that we have a uh, center seeking force. So we're going to call it a centri force and because of that we also have a center seeking acceleration as well because remember F equals MA so because of that if you have a force well if you have a net force you have acceleration so these are actually related here whoops I should probably move this so you have acceleration. So what this means then is that this sounds really weird, okay, because uh, if you're in a car and you're just driving forward, you understand that, you know, if you're accelerating, that means you change your velocity, you're going to sort of get uh, slammed in the front of, or I guess, uh, let's say your, your friend is driving a car and they slam on the gas. But what happens is your velocity changes and therefore you feel an acceleration. That means you feel a force. And that's why, you know, your head gets sort of plastered against the back of the car if, uh, or the back of the headrest, let's say. That's because an acceleration and a force are very closely related due to Newton's second law here, F equals ma. So if you have a net force, you have an acceleration. That means we can write this then. We're going to write it as AC. We're going to say that equation there. We're going to say it's equal to V squared over R. That's going to be the first equation here. So AC. Oops, I probably shouldn't have made my box like that, that close at least to it. There we go. So AC is going to be the centripetal acceleration because your acceleration is in the same direction as your force. Your centripetal acceleration, it's still measured in meters per second squared, and it's a vector. And remember, this is because if you have a force, then you also have an acceleration. So technically, this is the weird part, is that if you're going around in a circle, you're technically feeling an acceleration towards the center. And that, that isn't obvious. Most people don't really like that. It doesn't seem to make sense, but it really works. V, of course, is your velocity, which is in meters per second. And R is your radius. That'll be in meters. So for example, if you're going around in a circle, you know, like this right here, and this right here, that actual distance you're going around, that's your radius. That's your radius of sort of circle here. That's your circular radius. That's how that works. Now, of course, we also have a centripetal force. Turns out it's just, well, if F equals MA, and you have A as that value, then F is just throw an M in front. So MV squared over R. That's going to be the centripetal force. So FC is just a centripetal force, which is measured in Newtons. And we have, uh, of course, M is your mass in kilograms. So because you have an acceleration, you feel a force. Or you could say because you feel a force, you feel an acceleration. They're both the same, right? This leads to this. So again, if you want to know how to find um, the centripetal force, just throw an M in front of this one, right? because F equals MA. So just throw an M in front of A, and that means you throw an M in front of here. So that means you get MV squared over R. Those are the equations of circular motion. So that deals with uniform circular motion, centripetal force, and acceleration.